Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Billion. It's been a while since I posted my last video, but it doesn't mean I haven't been busy with this car. The reason for the delay is that I'm also refurbishing my home, and that has been taking a lot of my attention. However, I have a lot of spare parts that have been coming in over the last couple of weeks, so I'll show you what I've got. I won't open all the boxes, but I'll give you an idea. So in here, there is a gear to fix my odometer that's not working anymore. Up here, I've got some lights for my fog lights. In that box, I've got some mud flaps. In that box is very exciting stuff. It's all the decals that I need for this side and the back. And then in this box, all the way from the United States, is a lift kit for the front. And in this box, there's a little Bluetooth module so that I can see if I can at least get some sound in this car without having to add a radio. And then in this one, I think you will all recognize what this is. This is a whole batch of blue Plasti Dip. And in this one, a lot of spare parts to fix my gearbox mount, to fix my wheel bearings. I can't even remember what's in there. So there's quite a lot of stuff in here as well. So I think I'm going to change the format of the way I'm going to do these videos because I've simply got too big a job to fit it into one video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing off the ground, get the wheels off, and then start taking apart the rear section. And we'll see how far we get. So join me as we kick off the work on the safari again. Right, here we go. Alrighty, up in the air. So one of the things I've treated myself to is one of these. It's been years that I've been looking at getting one of these uh, impact guns. And never have I done it, but now I have. So it'll make removing big bolts so much easier. All right, so I've got the wheel off. Now all I have to do is remove this cotter pin. Let me just spin this around. So you can see there's this cotter pin here and this cotter pin has to come out. If the cotter pin is out, I can take off this castellated nut and then I can pull off the drum. What I did notice, however, is even though the previous owner told me that these drums are nice and fresh, this one seems to look okay. So this one might be fresh. Um, the other side is not looking too great. Let me go show you. That is no good. That's horrible. So um, I think I'm just going to order two new rear drums and then I'll know that the brakes on this car is good because this cannot be good. You can either use a 36 millimeter wrench to get this loose, but um, I sprung for an impact socket. This is 36 millimeters. So uh, I'm gonna put my gun on that and then hopefully it'll just loosen up. Okay. <laughs> so it's not working. I was thinking it's a bit ambitious, I'll put some penetrating oil on the red here and I'll let it sit maybe overnight and then I'll come and loosen this again and then tomorrow or so. Yeah, so I was afraid of this. The breaker bar is not doing anything. So um, let's bring on the heat. The whole idea behind having a cotter pin is that you don't have to talk the nuts off it. Anyway, you'll keep on trying. It's going to be an exciting video, guys. 
all about one nut, loosening a nut. Right, so I've given up on using fire, I've given up on using a breaker bar, and I have given up on using a impact gun. None of these three solutions have worked. And as you might have noticed from my previous videos, I've got a bit of a tool fetish. So I went and bought myself a torque multiplier. So let's get this guy on there and see if I can break that nut loose. Right, so after a lot of fiddling and thinking, this is the solution I've come up with. So um, I've got the wheel nut in the drum on a spanner because this little arm has to push against something. But because the nut is lifted off the drum, it's not close enough to that surface. So I had to create some form of lever system. So now I've done this. I might destroy a spanner and a bolt and a wheel drum in the process, but all of those things can be replaced. So here's nothing. I'm going to just try and crank this thing and see if I can get it to, to jump loose. I am feeling a bit of pressure in the arm. So here's, here's hoping that it goes. Well, I think I'm more likely to lose a spanner. All right, guys, I think I'm waving the white flag. I just had the car on the ground as well with a, what was it, a five foot or almost a one and a half meter extension on my, on my bra. And uh, as you can see, this one's no longer straight and my other one snapped. So I have no idea with how many Newton meters this thing has been fastened. But um, I think it's time to get out the saw and saw this nut off. I've got a new nut on order. So um, yeah, it's the first time in a very long time that a nut has me defeated. This has been four or five hours of me fighting this nut in all manners possible with hammers, with, with uh, pry bars, with this torque multiplier. I mean, this torque multiplier can do 5,000 Newton meters worth of torque. So I guess if I could get it anchored in a better way, I tried four different ways and every single time it just, uh, it just doesn't budge. When I had it anchored to the floor, I managed to lift the car in the air um, just by turning the little handle there. So I don't know. It doesn't look seized. It, it should just come loose, but it doesn't want to. So um, I'm going to saw it off. That's my only, only option. All right, guys. So what have I tried? I've done the torque multiplier. I have done the impact gun. I have done two of these breaker bars, one that's bent, one that's broken. I have beaten this to a pulp with a five pound hammer and a, a drift. Nothing. And oh yeah, of course there was the heat as well. Nothing has moved this bolt. So in the end, I've decided to use my multi-tool and I've now cut two grooves into this nut which has not been easy because it's hardened steel. So this is a real, real, real tough nut to cut. But um, as you can see, I've broken through and I've just nipped that one as well a little bit. So I think if I now start beating on this thing again, I think she'll come loose. Luckily, I've got new drums on order. So uh, I'm not too worried about the damage there. I've been doing my best to keep these threads clean. I don't want to damage things I don't have to, but... Uh, I've got to get this thing off. So uh, anyway, let's go and try with a drift in the hammer now and see if I can get it off. Finally, she's moving. Guys, this has been the toughest job 
I have done on a car in what must be 10 years. Let's hope the other side is a bit more forgiving. I have no idea what they turn this thing on with. It's not corroded, so uh, I have no idea. This must have been talked to like a thousand or something because nothing, nothing worked. Anyway, now we can move to the next step. All right, so the disc is off. Um, the thread is okay. I didn't damage it. Luckily, I'm very happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take apart the whole drum brake system here. I've got new springs here, here, this one and this one on order. I've got new brake shoes on order and I've got a new brake drum on order. I'm going to see if I'm seeing any leaking in the brake cylinder here, but I think this one's actually okay. And the previous owner told me that these have been rebuilt and looking at the condition of the springs and even the brake shoes, I am tempted to believe them. But um, like I said, that brake still says made in West Germany. Now, West Germany has not existed for going on 30 years now. So I know those drums are old. So let me take this off. And then we are one step closer to the wheel bearing. You can already see it sitting right there. Let's get going on removing all of these parts. All right, so I've got the brake shoes removed and I've basically got everything exposed so that I can start doing the work on replacing the wheel bearing. But I'm going to stop the episode here. And the reason for that is because there are other things that need to happen to this rear axle. So I'll do the other side off camera so you don't have to experience the pain of doing it twice. And then in the next episode, I want to drop this rear axle. The reason I want to do that is because I need to raise the ride height at the back by roughly four centimeters or two inches. The way you do that is by re-indexing the torsion bar that sits inside this housing that goes into the car like that. Now, if you have an early 924, it's a fairly straightforward job because on this side, just like the 911s, it has a round hole with a cap in it. So you can actually pull the torsion bar through the body, re-index it and put it back in. For some reason, on the little bit later models, I think even from 78 onwards, Porsche decided to do away with this cap. And the only way to re-index the rear suspension is by actually dropping the whole rear axle. It's not a lot of work, but it is a bit of a faffle to get it done. So um, in the next episode, you'll join me. We'll get that done. I'll show you and we'll, we'll discover together how to do this because I've never done this before. Hopefully we'll get the right out raised at the back. And once that's done, we'll go to the front and install the lift kit that I got from 944 Rally all the way from the United States. It's in that box. Thank you for watching. If you have any advice on how I can do things better, I'm always happy to learn. If you have any tool suggestions that I need to buy, that'll make me very happy because you can never have enough tools. Please like, please subscribe, leave comments, hopefully until soon.